Branding has become a buzzword. Hot take, maybe not hot take, maybe you've noticed, maybe you're annoyed by it. Regardless, if you are a business owner, this is something that's going to be a huge tool for you to be able to create a community around your brand. We recently finished up a branding project that we think is great, so we really wanted to show it to you guys. It's been awesome to see their brand come together and they're posting and utilizing their brand guideline to its fullest. So we thought we would show you guys what that looks like. We would break down what our process is and you can kind of understand what to expect if you're gonna work with a branding agency, specifically Coasting Creek. Anyway, speaking of Coasting Created, who am I? Where are you? What is this channel? This is Coasting Created and I am Kate. I am the co-owner and creative director of this digital marketing agency. I run it with my partner, David. We're a digital creative agency that specializes in helping businesses who are thriving offline get online. Coasting's goal is really to help people understand the online landscape and feel comfortable in it. We want to guide you. We don't just want to drop you off in the cold zone after the project's over. We really want our work with you to be a tool to have longevity and to be beneficial for your business primarily. My zone is very much the creative. So a lot of that is branding. So we thought we would break it down for you. So speaking of that, let's jump into branding. Like we said, branding is a buzzword, and that's because it's a really popular topic, as it should be. Everyone talks about it. Everyone is an expert on it. There are different types of branding. There's branding in photography. There's branding for graphic visuals. There's just brand positioning. You don't even have to go all the way through with the visuals. Maybe you just need direction in your business. But all of it boils down to really your identity. It's really the space that you want to create to work within so that everything aligns. It may be intimidating, but it's actually something that's going to be easier for you in the long term because you'll have a guide that's clear and concise for not only you, but for when you work with other people in the future. This could be printers, future designers, organizations, if you're in events, anything like that, that someone needs to be able to potentially recreate something for your brand or represent it in a way, you can hand this guide over and feel confident that they can follow it. So let's talk about what branding isn't, just to get it out of the way. You may not have heard of this before, but branding is not just one logo, it should not just be a font file, and it shouldn't just be a couple color swatches. These are all things that are going to be a part of branding. They will for sure be in your brand guideline, but the way that they need to be structured is so that they are living direction pieces for you. You need to be able to understand what to do with that font file, how to use it. Is there specific weights within that font or that typeface that you should be working within? Do you know what that means? Do you know the difference between a bold and a regular? Probably. But do you know when you should use a bold and a regular in your brand? Probably not, unless you have a guide. It's also really important to be conscious of the environment that you're presenting your brand in. This is why your brand needs to be flexible. We call it responsive, especially when we're talking about your logos. You can't just have one logo, I'm sorry. It's not gonna work for every place that you need it to be. So what happens if you don't dive in beyond visuals? You'll have visuals, but you might not have a brand. So let's talk about what branding is. It's quite a lengthy process if you really want to utilize it as best as you can. You want to get down to your positioning. So you want to talk about who you're targeting, what your mission is, why you stand apart from other people. We really need to dig into what you want your brand to be. What is your business? What are you selling? Who are you selling to? Why are you selling it? What is your unique placement in the industry that you're trying to work in or position yourself in? Things we look for in the development phase may feel kind of funny to you. One of our favorite questions is, if your business had a commercial, what song would it be playing? These are the kind of questions that we're going to use to really get down to what your brand's personality is. Not just what you're offering, but how you're offering it, why you're different. Once you get to a place where your concepts of your visuals are matching up with your positioning, then we can dive into the actual 
visual visuals. <laughs> so we're going to be creating your logo series. We're going to be creating the colors and the fonts, but all these things are going to have um, development behind them, positioning them so we can feel confident in our choices. And we know that there's a reason why we're choosing certain things. And not only that, but we know how to use them and how to even evolve them. Because again, branding is alive. So you got to keep it going. This is about your business. Your business is going to grow. It's never going to be the same. It's never going to be stagnant. Neither should your branding. Yes, you should have your core as your business will have its core offering. But this is essentially your lifeline for your customers and for the people that are going to be connecting with you. Let's take an offline storefront, for example. Branding's probably happening and you don't even realize it. Let's say they roll up and park. Are there flowers planted? When they first walk in the door, are they greeted? Is it the kind of store that your customers are gonna wanna keep their head down and browse on their own? Are they smelling candles? Are they feeling confident to ask questions? Are they listening to music? Is it a self-serve? Are they going to the counter for help? Are they wandering? All those kind of things are really what build your brand in a physical sense. We really wanna dive deep into these elements with you, figure out all the things that are unique, what makes you you, what makes your business stand apart from other people. These are the things that we're gonna to put together and create an online version for you so that this community that you've already created offline can continue online. Let's get into it. This brand that we worked on is called Long Life Reps. They are a entrepreneur couple, just like us. So we were really excited to work with them. The way we started off is with core values. Although core values may not be the service you're offering or the product you're selling, it's what's going to drive people to connect with you, to want to purchase your product and become essentially a little mini brand ambassador on their own. With everything, the core values are going to be a tool, but they are going to be the tool that you're starting with. So we're gonna establish what sets you apart and what connects you to your clients. After we have your core values established, we're gonna move into your mission statement. This isn't your tagline. This is the statement that your team internally is going to refer back to consistently so that you guys are on the same page with what your goal is. In a sense, this is a snapshot at what people can expect from your brand. With that, also we break it down into specific brand voices so you can write content and make it feel on brand. And we're also going to help you develop a tagline. This is short, punchy, quick to the point, and something that you're going to be able to sell in an elevator. This is really instrumental in promoting your brand, telling people who you are really quickly, and just getting the word out. This is the part where we're gonna send you a survey and we're gonna have a call with you and we're gonna write things down and we're gonna ask you questions. This is probably the part that people dread the most about branding processes. So sometimes they get skipped. It's easier, quicker, maybe less hours on the designer, less time from the client to have to respond to questions and emails. But what happens with that is you just end up having flat visuals that you don't feel connected with. And that's really important in your brand. We want to create visuals for you that you feel connected with, that you feel like can have longevity for your business, that you feel represents you accurately and you feel that you can grow with. So once we have that foundation, we do dive into the fun part. We kick off the visuals with a good old mood board and a bunch of market research, but then quickly move into logo development. Like I said earlier, our logos are developed in suites. So you're going to get minimum three logos with your brand packs. You're gonna start out with your main logo. This is gonna be the big baddie that you put on anything. The secondary logo is going to be a simplified version. This is going to be utilized when your main logo is just too big or too complex. So you can use this secondary one for small features in bios or maybe your email signature or something like that. The third one is going to be your icon or monogram. And if you don't know what monogram is, it's basically just two letters or a letter put together. But that is going to be the most simplified version of your mark. It's going to almost be like a shape or just a standalone graphic. For example, with long life reps, we went ahead with a monogram style. Um, instead of a shape, we used the L and the R from their words. We wanted to make sure that since they were a newer upcoming business, that they were going to be easily recognizable, whether the client or social media followers saw their main logo or their icon. That was really important to us and to them. With that being said, our logo process begins with the main core logo. We're going to present you three options and explain to you the strengths of all of them and how we think that they can most benefit your brand. 
once you've decided on the winner, we're going to go into deep production and create those three versions for you. That's sweet. You're gonna have your main logo, your secondary simplified logo, and your third icon. Once we've sent those over and they're all approved on your end, we're gonna move into creating the rest of the brand for you. The next step we're gonna go into is going to be colors, type, and graphics. These are all of your assisting elements that are going to support your logo and all the positioning that we've already done ahead of time. We're gonna start off with your typography and we're gonna provide you a primary typeface and a secondary typeface. We'll also provide you with a full color palette. You'll have main colors and you'll also have accent colors so you can design with them. And we're gonna give you textures as well. These are graphic backgrounds that can help build your brand. Once we have all these elements, we're going to put them together in one place for you. This is called our brand guidebook. Essentially, you're going to have everything that we just walked through, but it's all gonna be explained to you. It's gonna be broken down in terms that you understand that makes sense to not only you, but a team or people that you'll be working with. We wanna guide you through this, but we also want you to be able to do this on your own. We want you to feel confident in what you just paid for. We want you to feel confident in the book that you have in front of you and all of the tools that you've created with us. This book covers everything, so you're going to be able to know how to use your logos, how much space to put around your logos, when and where to use your logos. You're gonna understand what colors go together, which ones complement each other, when and where to use certain colors, which photos to match colors with, typography, best way to use them, best way to use the two fonts together or alone, how to make a recognizable brand standard in your content. We've given visual examples, post examples, mock-ups of potential merch or apps that you're developing in the future. Whatever it is, we like to make sure that your book is customized to you and makes sense again to you and is relevant to what you're doing. With all that being said, we wanna make sure that after your branding process with Coasting, you're walking away with confidence, you're walking away with a direction for your brand, you're walking away with a long-term investment that's really benefiting you and your team. Above all else, we want this to be a tool for when you're creating content, whether in Photoshop or Canva or working with a printer or anything, really. This guide will have all the information that you need no matter where you're working. And that is our branding process. If this branding process jumped out to you as something that your business needs, we would love to chat with you. Head over to coastingcreated.com slash start to fill out our interest form and get a call booked in with me and David. If there's anything additional that you'd like to add on, for instance, setting up your brand in Canva, creating content for your brand on social, or hiring us to take it all off your hands. We'd love to chat with you and figure out where we can take your brand together. That's all we got for this video. So we will see you on the flippity flip. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.